Hello everyone, this is Dr. Wallace. Variables are a key component of every research study, which means understanding their role is important when looking at research methodology. However, I will be the first to admit that variables were the most challenging component of research for me to comprehend when I was a doctoral student. Therefore, I want to see if I can break variables down in a way that makes them simple to understand. Let's kick things off by defining variables. There are two types of variables, dependent and independent. You may also hear these referred to as DV and IV. So what's the difference between these two types of variables? A dependent variable relies upon something else to occur to have a result. Hence, the reason it is called dependent. An independent variable is something that is manipulated or changed in a research study, typically to watch the impact on the dependent variable. Okay, that's one way to look at these two types of variables, but let me see if I can offer some other ways to distinguish the differences between the two. I already mentioned the manipulator result relationship between independent and dependent variables. Other ways of viewing this relationship include viewing the independent variable as the cause and the dependent variable as the effect, or the independent variable being the influencer and the dependent variable being the outcome. Now, if you're like me, when I was trying to understand variables as a student, these explanations are great if you're able to grasp concepts from a book, but I need more to put real meaning to these differences. Therefore, let's look at some real examples and see if that helps clear things up. Before we jump into our first example, I think it is important to understand the relationship between variables and hypothesis statements. A hypothesis is a prediction of what we believe the study will find, or put another way, the answer to the research question. A hypothesis is an empirical statement that can be verified based upon observation or experience. Finally, a hypothesis is testable to be true or false through the research study findings. Since our hypothesis makes a prediction, it is only logical that our variables have to be included in the hypothesis. Our hypothesis is where we show the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. Therefore, using a hypothesis as a starting point for each example not only allows us to see how variables operate in a research study, but it also gives us the benefit of understanding how they are part of the hypothesis. Okay, enough of the textbook stuff. Let's look at some real examples. Let's begin with a really simple one. Our hypothesis for this example will be that changing the thermostat setting up or down will cause the room temperature to change in the same way. Okay, let's figure out what our dependent and independent variables are in this hypothesis. The easiest way to do this is to go back to our definitions of independent and dependent variables. Based upon those definitions, we are looking for the item in our hypothesis that manipulates, causes, or influences something to be our independent variable. When I look at the hypothesis, I see that the thermostat setting is the thing I am talking about altering. Therefore, it is my independent variable. Now, let's figure out the dependent variable. What is the thing that is seeing the result, effect, or outcome of changing the thermostat setting our independent variable? Based upon the way my hypothesis is worded, room temperature is being impacted, therefore it is my dependent variable. Simple enough, right? Okay, let's try another one. This time, let's look at a hypothesis for a criminal justice related study. My hypothesis in this study will be, individuals stopped for speeding that receive a warning ticket are more likely to speed again in the near future than those receiving a speeding ticket. Okay, take a moment now and look at the criteria for both the independent and dependent variables and tell me what they are in this hypothesis statement. If you said the type of ticket is the independent variable, you are right. The type of ticket is the independent variable because we are looking at the effects of a warning ticket versus a speeding ticket on the likelihood to speed again in the near future. Now, what is the dependent variable? If you listened to what I just said, I actually told you. That's right. The dependent variable is the likelihood to speed again in the near future. See, this isn't that hard. Okay, you're getting good at this now, so let's try one that is a bit harder. Okay, 
here's our third hypothesis. Teenagers with positive family relationships and actively involved in after-school programs are less likely to participate in deviant behavior as an adult. All right, here are our criteria for the independent and dependent variables. Now, can you tell me what the independent variable is? Let me give you a moment to think about it. If you said that family relationships and after-school program involvement are both independent variables, then you are right. Yes, I threw you a bit of a twist on this one. In this hypothesis, we are looking at the impact of two different independent variables on our dependent variable. I wanted to toss in this example because we will sometimes have multiple variables in a study. Okay, do you know what our dependent variable is in this hypothesis? That's right. The dependent variable is adult deviant behavior. With this hypothesis, we have predicted that teenagers with positive family relationships and actively involved in after-school programs will be less likely to participate in deviant behavior as an adult than those teenagers that do not. Okay, I've given you the basics you need to understand variables. However, the secret to how I reinforce this information for myself was that I kept practicing. I practiced by looking at everyday scenarios in my life. I know this might sound silly, but it worked for me. Start breaking down things you observe in your everyday life, and before you know it, you will get the hang of how variables work in a research study. Let's conclude by summarizing what we have covered. There are two types of variables, independent and dependent. Independent variables manipulate, cause, or influence a reaction in a research study. Dependent variables are the result, effect, or outcome of the action taken by the independent variable. Finally, the best way to understand variables is to keep practicing it in your everyday life. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this lesson. I hope you now have a better understanding of variables and how to tell the difference between independent and dependent variables.